Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. Today we're going to be tackling the room editor and everything therein. So that's going to be the room properties, cameras and viewports, layers and resources, and the shortcuts to make it all happen smoothly and quickly. So to access the room editor, you just open up any room. Every project starts with one and you double click on it and it takes you to that. What I've got open here is the Yo-Yo Dungeon demo. You can grab this by opening up Game Maker Studio, going to demos and downloading Yo-Yo Dungeon so you can follow along or just grab it and dissect it yourself if that's your preference. So we're gonna be tackling everything to do inside of this room editor and there's quite a bit. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing we've got here is the room canvas, which is everything you can see right here. If I hold control and use my middle mouse wheel to zoom in, we can take a closer look at this canvas. You can see that it's got a lot going on here. So this is a really well-built room and we're gonna take a look at this more in depth. Then up on the right is the room toolbox. These are your controls for the room. The first one here is the grid, which you can just turn off and on. But there's also a little arrow, which you can toggle the grid options. So you can change the color of the grid, you can change the snap of the grid, and you can also change the size of the grid. Now, the size of the grid is important and the snap, because if you're designing something like a tower defense game, then a lot of times you're gonna need those objects, those tiles to go in a very specific spot because you're gonna be placing enemies and paths along the way. Maybe you're making an RPG and you need to be able to just move uh, 32 by 32 as you go along. Snapping is going to allow you to do that. And depending on the layer you have selected, you'll be able to have a few different options such as actually changing the grid X and Y when you're on an instance layer as opposed to a tile layer where that is set by the tile set you're using. Then we can zoom out with control minus or this right here. You can reset the zoom with this and you can zoom in with control plus. And then we can just center fit the entire thing here. This is showing the views. This is something I'd recommend keeping on until you're familiar with cameras and views, which we're also gonna tackle in just a minute. And then if you have anything that you can play, such as animations, you can press play. So if we come down here, we actually have an animated waterfall and some stuff over here. This toggles it and you can play it. And we also have the option to select from any layer that we have in the game. And we have a lot of different layers here. And so if we toggle this on, we can select anything that we click on from any layer and it will just grab it. We don't have to find the specific layer. It only works for the first time you select, but you can press P to toggle that on and off, which is pretty nice. Down at the bottom here is the status bar. And this just shows you your X and Y and the specific ID of what you've got selected here and it's X and Y. You can also double click on an object or anything you have inside of here to see more properties and even change some of these properties. Like I can flip the X, I can flip the Y, I can move this around, I can change the color that it's on so I could make this like a red rock if I wanted to. I can change the sprite of this one and so on and so forth by just double clicking on it and making those changes. And you can also see that we have some rulers and guides along the path here that you can see exactly how far you are into the room if you need to be able to measure that and make sure you're putting things at the correct spot. It starts at zero, zero in the top left and just gets larger as you go from there. And then we have all this stuff on the left and we're gonna start at the top. So we have layers. Just like in the image editor video when I talked about layers and building your images layer by layer, the same is true inside of a room, but it's even more so important here because each layer holds a unique asset type. So this double circle is for instances. That means if you drag an object, such as a treasure chest, into your game, that must be on an instance layer. Now, all of these layers are named really well, and that means we don't wanna put a treasure chest on a lighting layer, so I'll go ahead and delete that. But if we come down and we say, oh look, there's an instances layer, and there's an items layer. Let's grab that. And then we can drag the chest into here and it makes a lot more sense. Now dragging an item one at a time works, 
but it's also going to be really slow if you want to add a bunch of them. So while having an object selected and being on an instance layer, you can hold Alt and then you can just hold down the mouse button hit as many as you want to move it around. I'm gonna press Control Z because we don't need that many treasure chests. When you're on a layer, you have the properties for that layer, which changes depending on the layer that you're on. So as an items layer, we can see all the items in the entire game. And I can double click on this and it'll take me to where this one is and open up its editor, which is pretty cool. Now there are a bunch of layers here. So we've got a background layer, which if we look at this, there is a background layer because you definitely always want one. Without a background layer, your game uh, it's going to have some very unique issues, so make sure you have that enabled. Then we can have an instance layer, which we've already talked about. Then we have tile layers. Now, tile layers are really great because they allow you to use tile sets. And if you want to learn specifically about tile sets, then check out the tile set editor video where I go way more in depth on that. But once you have a tile set, if you come over here to the room editor, it shows up. Now you can select which tile set you've got right here. There's a couple ones to choose from in this, and then those tiles will show up here and you've got the same kind of toolbox that you can fit and zoom in and see the grid on in the tile sets. But if you select a tile set, you can then draw it inside of your room like this, which is really, really handy. This one is specifically for roofs. So we would only want to be choosing this roof one and put these in the right spot for where it goes but you can have lots of different tile sets. And this is where layers becomes especially important. You can see this one's called roofs and this one is called walls, ground, and water. That means that anything on ground, if we put it above the water, it'll work. But if we go to water and we try to put something below ground or roof, it's not gonna show up at all. The layer order is extremely important. So if we move these around, we can really mess up the room. So make sure that when you are doing layers and tiles, you put them in a place that makes sense. Then we have path layers, which we actually have a couple here. So if we click on this and we click on the eye icon, we can then see it. The eye icon hides or makes things visible both in the editor and in the game. So this path one actually hides this path for this little skeleton guy over here. We can see that with that, we know now where he's going to be walking. So he's gonna move from here to this dot and then walk right back. So it's the path that he's taking. I'm gonna remove that so we don't see it anymore. Then we have asset layer, which we have one right here. This is for pretty much all of the images that you do not interact with. So we have the fountain down here, which is animated like we saw before, if we click on play, it's an actually an animated sprite which you can drag just straight into your game. Inside of your room, not everything has to be an object. Objects run code most of the time and they have a lot of built-in properties. So the more objects you have, the more processing power your game requires. And that means it might slow it down, it might take longer, and if you have too much, it might not run at all. So using an asset layer is a great way to put images and sprites into your game without having them tied to objects. And then you can also group these together by folders and delete them. Now below the layers and the layer properties, we've got the room properties themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize these because we wanna take a closer look at the room settings. So the first thing we've got here is whether this room is persistent. And that means like it did in the object editor, is this room going to retain the changes? So if we're in a fighting game or something that we can destroy things, if we destroy an object and the room is persistent, if we leave it and come back, that object will be gone. If it is not persistent, this room will appear like this every single time we enter it. It all depends on what you need the room for inside of your game. There's also a clear display buffer, which is something you wanna leave unchecked unless you find out specifically that you need it checked. So don't worry about that. And then we have the width and height of the room size itself. A lot of people get this confused with uh, the actual view or the cameras, but these are completely unrelated. You can have almost as large of a room as you want. If I added a zero onto this, well, it's gonna be really, really big, but you can. You can have a room this large and Game Maker's gonna work with it. Now you're gonna want to do some fancy tricks where you uh, don't allow the objects to be running when you're not close to them because 
you can fit a lot of objects in a room this size, but you can have as large of rooms as you want. I'm going to go ahead and delete those zeros. And the room size is completely not tied to the camera. So what is the camera? Let's go to viewports. We've already got them enabled and you can kind of tell by this right here. If I run the game, I'm going to be seeing about this size, not that spot because we're actually following the player here, but you can see that I see about that much as we see this white rectangle. And that's because the camera is set to 640 by 360. So we can see 640 pixels wide and 360 pixels high. And you must have viewports enabled and the viewport you're using visible. The viewport itself is the window into your game. So if we run this one more time, let's take a look at the actual size of the window we can see into our game, which on my screen is not too large. I'm using a 1440p monitor, which means that I've got more pixels. So this 1280 by 720 actually looks, you know, not even taking up half my screen. But if we jumped this up to say 1920 by 1080 and we ran this, this is standard HD. And now it's a lot larger. So you can see that the window has changed, but we actually still see the exact same amount. And that's because the viewport controls the actual view that you have around your game. The camera controls how much you see of your game in your room. So if I jump that up to 1920 by 1080 and I run that, well, we are now going to be able to see a whole lot more and we're going to be very, very tiny on this screen. But you can do that. Now, it's important to note that these changes, the camera properties and the viewport properties, you want them to be related in that they have the same ratio for dimensions, which means that if I had set this width to 1080 and the height to 1920, so I flip flopped them, this is not going to come out looking good. It's going to come out all skewed and messed up. But this is just affecting how we're viewing it. We know everything is still the right way. We just put in uh, a ratio that is not very compatible with a widescreen on a computer. If you're doing a phone, that may make more sense, but this is not a phone. So make sure that you look up ratios and understand which ones you're doing. If you're not sure what to go with, 640 by 360 and 1920 by 1080 is a great starting point. You can also have the camera following a specific object and when that camera moves, so we have a border and a speed. You can also do all of this in code, which gives you more flexibility. But when starting out, using the GUI here in the room editor is definitely the preferred and easiest way to go. And that's everything about the room editor that you need to know to get started right away. Go ahead and dive in, start making your own projects, creating your own rooms, get as creative as you want, because Game Maker has the editor to allow it. Thanks for joining me. If you liked the video, leave a like. And as I always like to say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.